and welcome back. So it's October and October for me is Olitoba. That hashtag I kind of like made up last year, um, just a few months after I started the YouTube channel. Um, I went through an Olivetti computer back then and if you want to see that one, it's up there and down there in the description somewhere. Today, or in this month, I'm going to plan small episodes going through this very rare computer from Olivetti. And yes, it's an Olivetti L1 M20. More on that later. I just want to say one thing. This has been given to me by a very, very dear friend now, Torsten Jan. Thank you very much. He actually drove nine hours in his car from the south of Germany all the way up here to Denmark to hand this over to me. And as you can see on the picture right here, this is where he arrived with it and we were looking at the computer. Again, Thorsten Jan, thank you very much. This is much appreciated as are all the donations for this channel. This is what makes it possible for me to show off the computers to you when you donate them to me. So I shall move the camera a little bit closer and we shall have a twirl around the computer. In this episode, I'm just more or less focusing on the outside of the computer, trying to explain to you what's going on. What is this? And I need to say to all of you, we will learn as we go along. I have never seen one of these before, therefore never worked on one of these before. And therefore, I have not much knowledge about the computer itself, but I'm sure we shall all figure out what's going on underneath this hood of this computer. So I think the first thing we need to do is put it on the scale and see how heavy this is. And the unit itself is 13 kilo. Let's put the monitor on it. The monitor is very light actually. So the complete system is 22.38 kilo and which is 49.30 so it's not that heavy the computer let me take it down from the scale so we can get a closer look at it and swirl a little bit around it As it's October, it's also the year, well, the period of the year where it rains a lot in Denmark. So right now it's raining, but nevertheless, let's not um, be disturbed by the rain outside and let's concentrate on the computer. So the first thing you noticed is the front that the keyboard is built into the actual case. So you cannot take the keyboard away um, but just touching the keys, they, well, they feel dirty, but they also feel very textile. So there's a nice click to them. Besides the keys, we have weird keys over here. We have some, I will move you closer when we are going through the actual keyboard itself. But there's a command key, which is orange and there's a control key over here and then there's something called S1 and something called S2. We have a numeric area over here and on top here we have the Olivetti L1 M20 up here. Over here I see a power light and I kind of like see an Olivetti computer. It looks like 
the M24 somehow. I can't explain why I think, but something is saying Olivetti M24. Maybe it's because of this, I don't know what that is, grill or whatever it's here. But on the top, we have two floppy disk drives in this model and there are two disks inside. And um, this one says Program Arbeitsdiskette. That's German and means working disk. And if I have a look at the other one, it is actually saying Materialdaten Arbeitsdiskette. Um, 200186 material data that means material data so I'm ex I'm assuming I don't know what this is this one over here is the program and this is the data for the program I must assume but we'll we'll see more on this later on but there are two floppy disk drives I don't know anything about the computer therefore I don't know what sizes the disk drives are I think I think it came in 180, 360, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure it out once we open it up and see what drives are in there. But this is the computer from the front. The monitor sits on top. Again, I think this is why I, I can see this is an Olivetti computer because it looks exactly like the other Olivetti monitors from that um, period when the Olivetti M24 came out. So this looks as it should, right? It sits on top and yeah, again, I, I know you can't see it. We will move closer later on. This area where the monitor has sits, this has a gray, light gray area and this has obviously had a lot of sun. So this is in another color. So the original color is up here. The monitor seems to be able to either move to one side or to the other side up here. Let's uh, concentrate on the unit itself. So if I turn it a little bit around, um, there's, there's like a little bit of a grill underneath here. But let me turn it around. And on the side, I see a tiny bit of some grill down here. And then over there, I see a reset button. So you need a pen to make a soft reset for the computer, I will assume. And if we just take the other side, just to see if there's anything there. There's another grill over here a little bit. And then we have a Olivetti serial number. And the serial number is 1286, which most likely is week 1286, 1986, obviously. And then 016203, and I think that's a C. Um, so that's the naming of it. Let's twirl around to the back where we also see the Olivetti monitor, where we can see it's Olivetti L1 monitor. Up here we have some adjustment to the monitor, some sorts. I will assume this is brightness. I see a fan behind here, so the power comes in over here, so this area must be some sort of power. I haven't opened it up yet. So there's also a f some slots here that have not been populated and we need to figure out what is what. I think this could be like a printer port maybe or serial port. This one over here, which is a weird thing, but hey ho, this is Olivetti, right? And we are used to proprietary Olivetti own designed connections. So have a look at the monitor connector. That one is crazy, right? But that one I have figured out fits in here and it can only go one way. I'm not sure which way I think it's like this. It sits like this in there. And the reason why I think this is a printer port is that this one came with this one and again, it's a very, very weird one, but that also fits like this over here and gives you the interface for a printer, I must assume, right? On the left, sorry, on the right here, we have the power in and there's an on and off button, 
right here. That's like it. That's it. That's the computer. So this computer already started designing the computer back in 1979. They did this in uh, Cupernito in California, Silicon Valley, at the Advanced Technology Center that Olivetti had over there. And the computer was announced in March, uh, three years after, so in 1982. The designer for this beautiful computer, which looks, again, like many of the other designs from Olivetti, was designed, and I'm sorry if I pronounced the word incorrectly, but it's Ittore Sotaras, um, an Italian, um, who was one of the designer for many of Olivetti's both computers and other uh, equipment from Olivetti, like typewriters and what else they had at that time. I think we should try and open this up briefly and have a peek inside the actual computer. So let me take off the monitor to the side. I'm sorry, I'm leaning in. And in order to get into the computer, I have already had a peek at it. And if I turn it a little bit around, maybe I should unhook all the cables we put in prior. Makes it easier to turn it around. I just wanna ensure that there are no cables on the bottom, sorry, screws, I mean, and there's absolutely nothing. The only two screws I see on the outside are two screws down here, flat screws. So let me find a screwdriver and let's um, see if we can open this computer up. I probably need to be careful as it's upside down right now. I can see that just like the Olivetti M24, these screws don't come out, so you don't lose the screws. So this is most likely where the design for those screws on the M24 came from. Let me turn it around and let's see if we can open it up. And as the screws are in the back, I'm assuming we can lift it up this way maybe. Seems so. Oh, yes. And if I now move a little bit closer, I hope you can see this area where the monitor is. This gray, light gray, is not the same as the rest. And maybe you now think I'm going to retrobrite this. I'm not. Because there is more or less no reason to retrobrite a computer. Um, for a few reasons, and this is just me. It will eventually turn back to the original color. And there are rumors, I cannot confirm it, that when you retrobrite, it actually kind of like ruins the plastic a bit. And due to the fact it will turn back to the color over time again, I'm just gonna leave it as it is, but we're gonna wash it. As we should, right? Let me put this on the ground. So this gives us access to the computer. And I think I need to adjust the camera. Like this. And um, here we have the computer with the keyboard. The two floppy drives. Oh, this plate also comes off. I see. Ah, okay. So this just is held in from the casing which then gives us more view of the floppy disk drives. And over here I can see this is power. So this is the power supply for the unit. We see a fan in the back. And if we turn a little bit around to the side maybe, I can see some expansion port here and one specific card. Uh, let me just briefly move this out. So this card here 
This card is, let me see if I can find something. Must say something up here maybe, yeah. So this says Olivetti M20 memory expansion. And it's a revision D memory expansion. And I, let's see. So this is Mustech MK4116N2GP. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. I know this. I know the CPU inside this no, one, and I know this is a sixteen-bit computer. I'm not gonna tell you anything more right now. So this is thirty-two megabyte. Uh, sorry, kilobyte of RAM, um, and there are three expansions. So I'm assuming that you can have three of these inside them. More on all of this later. So let me just put this back in again. And we shall see about the keyboard. I see a screw here. Oh, it's very loose. It is very loose. So we can actually lift up the keyboard. And in order to take the keyboard away, somehow we need to, these looks like ground. So let's unscrew these on the side. One keyboard. Let's um, unhook it over here at this area. There we go. So here we have the keyboard. Up here it says 23rd of September 1982. And there's a number, probably a serial number for the keyboard, 16438. It's a German keyboard. I can see, and we have the light up here. And when I turned it around, I saw a, I'm not gonna call this a speaker, this is probably just a thing that can make beep. This is the um, microprocessor for the whole keyboard. And this arrangement, without this one, but this actually looks like the Olivetti um, keyboards, keyboard one and keyboard two. And again, if you wanna have a look at those keyboards from Olivetti, I have put it up there and in the description again. So, it seems that the keys have different colors. So A, S, D, maybe T over here are light gray, Q, W, E, R are darker. So a discoloration of the key has happened to the keyboard, I don't think a keyboard would be produced in two colors. So they have probably been produced in two different batches. So they discolor over time differently. What we need to do is we need to obviously take off the keys so we can see what type of keyboard this is, what's underneath it. And if you listen, very tactile. So I'm assuming it's just like keyboard one and keyboard two. Take this aside and um, just briefly have a peek down here. And let me zoom in a little bit. I'll move the camera a little bit down. So we see the computer closer up. And the star of this show and this computer is a rare CPU. It's this one. This is a Psylocke. And more or less everybody knows the Silex Z80. This is not a Z80. The Z80 is 8-bit. This is a Z8001, which means this is a 16-bit. This um, Silex CPU range, there were four of them. Um, more on that once we dig into the board. Um, we're not backwards compatible with the Z80, so you cannot swap software with this. I'm not going to talk about the board itself because once we have ripped out the disk drives, looked at the power supply, we have gained, we will gain access 
to the board, but I can see that the board goes from the front all the way underneath and into the back here. So, what should we do? I think the most important thing, because we want to see if it actually works, so we can start figuring out how to plan future videos uh, if there's any fault on the board. So, the power supply is most likely the one we need to focus on first. And I'm not sure how to get into the computer. As I said, I have no idea how this works as this is the first time. But I can see two screws in the front, which probably means I can then lift out this unit. If I briefly take away the memory card again, and we can see if there's anything in the back. Uh, don't see any specific screws, but something must hold it in. So, um, in order for us to gain access to this area. But this also seems a little bit loose over here. So maybe this can also just be taken out. I'm not sure. We will have a look at that. But um, let's see how we attack this one. So I remove the two screws from here. And it seems that it's now very loose. Just need to unhook the cables in the back and um, this goes down to the motherboard so let's take this off here and how does the power work there are molex collectors here and there's one over here so these two cables we have there which then as i can see makes it possible for us to take out sorry you couldn't see this but there it is the two floppy disk drives i'll take this to the side and just briefly see if we are gaining any more access to the power supply over here doesn't seem to maybe I think that down there, if I take the screwdriver there, that we can maybe move this this way somehow. It's hinged down there, I think, and then maybe this plate can come out. So let me try that. I was, I was right. That. And I can see that the floppy disk drives, they are screwed in the front, but they are hooked into these in the back. Let me um, take this to the side, which gives us a very beautiful view of the actual motherboard. And what about the power supply over here? I think it's kind of like the same idea. So it also moves to the side. So if I move this way, maybe I can take it off. And um, it's connected here to the motherboard. There we go. These two cables go over here. There's something going on right here that goes into the fan. So I'm not sure we can take it out. And I see some ground leads. But let's just try and lift it up. A little bit difficult because the power cable is in the way. But let's see. And yes, it comes out. So I need to unhook the ground cable that's connected to the fan and obviously somehow let me see if you can see this so the fan gets power from up here 
by these two wires going into the fan and this can just be screwed out. So I think I'm just gonna screw out or loosen these two screws. As they are black, I don't think there's a left and right. And then I need to take out the ground cable that goes into the fan somehow. And I down here, I also see a ground cable. Let me see. I see a ground cable down there that is connected directly to the motherboard. So that can just be pulled out. So let me do that. I have decided not to do it anyway. And um, because there's a bolt on the other side of that screw and I will lose that one. So let me just try and explain. We are doing this as we go along and we are gonna experience some things that we need to undo. So again, I'm gonna unplug these two, but I can see that this ground cable is actually also down there. So I can just unhook it from this ground here and this one down there, I will probably be able to take this out. So let me just try that way instead of. So the power supply is out and um, the things I was talking about is this area up here. So obviously the Molex collect, uh, connector and the power for the motherboards comes out here. So this is the output and here we have the input. And those two, which is this one and this one, that's the power for the fan. And this area down here is grounding. So here you connect all the grounds. So there was a cable, I can't really see it, but there was a cable here sticking out here. That's just grounded to the actual fan. And then the two cables for the fan up there. So I will um, briefly take this away. I will blow some air into it and then um, it's a little bit dusty, but, and then I think these three screws can be opened up and there's one down there. And once that, that may be, I'm pretty sure we can then lift all this up. So let me come back. I really got carried away <laughs> once again, and I think we are now on half an hour. And I was planning on making these videos short. So we're gonna cut here. The power supply is out. I have already blown air in it and on the board just to get rid of all the dust bunnies there. So it's time out. Stay tuned. Ring the bell so you get notified for the next one, Olitopa, where we'll be looking into the power supply. And I think Thereafter, obviously, we will test if the computer is working, but we need to clean stuff. So power supplies up next time. Stay tuned and see you soon. My name is Taibo and goodbye for now.